moment here. And, and sadly, Mr. Duggan got on the bus to take the, the basketball players to Barlow. Um, so I'm here all by myself sitting here in the classroom with the rain pounding on the roof. It's very sad. Um, but this is a big moment for you guys. Okay, Up until now, you've been able to say, look people in the eye and say, I'm not a rocket scientist, but, you know, and then you say something, right, you know. After this moment, you technically can't say that because I'm going to teach you how rockets work. Okay, so this is a big, big moment for you guys. Think seriously before you cross this threshold, okay? Are you still there? Okay, so let me tell you how rockets work, right? And, and the cool thing is there's no new formulas. It's just using the formulas we have, right? If we have a rocket and the, the rocket has a thrust and the, a burn time, right? In other words, we ex the, 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 the rocket exerts a force, engine exerts a force for a certain amount of time. The question, where does that come from? Well, it comes from the mass of the fuel getting pushed down this way. Basically, it burns stuff. The explosion goes out the bottom. And if we push some mass with some exhaust velocity downward, right, okay, then we're going to get a, an upward thrust, right? So all we do is we recast our old friend force times time is mass times change in velocity uh, in terms of uh, fuel burn, the time it takes to burn the fuel. Uh, uh, F is now the engine thrust, so thrust is just another word for force, right? And now our delta V is the exhaust gas velocity of, of the... Um, of the, of the stuff that comes out the bottom, right? Now, the basic idea of how rockets work is this, is that if you take some molecule of gas and you push the gas down, the gas will push the rocket up. Molecule by molecule, what a rocket is pushing off of is the stuff it's throwing downwards, right? Or let me put it this way. If I gave you a, a bucket full of bean bags, heavy bean bags, and put you on a frictionless glider, like, like a giant one, like the one I showed you guys are in class, right? And you threw those beanbags behind you, you would actually move the other way. So the question about what a rocket pushes off of is that it pushes off of its fuel. It pushes the fuel that way. And the, the fuel pushes the rocket that way. That's the equal and opposite force. That's Newton's third law. So, uh, you know, very quickly, this will be a demonstration that we're going to do. We're going to have a, two rocket engines, or the same rocket engine, right? And, and kids always think, and, and they're wrong, by the way, that the rocket pushes off of the launch pad, right? Rockets don't push off the launch pad. They push off of the fuel that they're pushing out behind them, right? So students get a distinct impression that B is going to be faster. It's going to take off faster because it's got something to push off of. Well, to demonstrate this in class, we're actually going to bring in an F-14. The Navy has, has, has volunteered to let us use an F-14. We're going to set it up in the parking lot. We're going to put nothing behind it. And then we're going to put a blast-proof shield behind the F-14. And we've got these giant stress gauges that are going to measure the thrust that the F-14 is creating. Um, and we can just monitor those. And, and the question is, if we put something right behind the engines, does the, um, does the force go up, right? Uh, so when you see aircraft carriers, that thing right there, is that for this airplane to push off of? Is that thing you know, like, like that? Of course, if it is, why is it angled like that, right? That's not what it's for. There is another picture of it, right? So let's, let's solve a problem, right? As I said before, we're just going to go force times time is mass change in velocity. Now, here's the weird thing is that we've got a fuel burn rate, Okay. All that means is that it burns 1.2 kilograms in one second. So when it comes time to use a time, we're going to say, okay, the mass is 1.2 kilograms, right? Uh, the exhaust velocity, that's our delta V. That's easy, right? Right? The time, if they, if it's, if they give you kilograms per second, remember that's 1.2 kilograms per one second. They're just not saying the one. That's the trick. That's how they get you. Okay, so force times time is mass change in velocity. So again, I just go this times this divided by this. But if that's always one, isn't it just, yeah, anyway, you'll figure it out. You'll do enough of these. 1.2 times 1250. Okay, and then I, oh, I got to divide by one. I divided by one. They, oh, it's still 1500. Yeah, so the force ends up being uh, 1500. And this is the thrust of the engine. 
Okay, so let's do one that's a little more difficult. Um, it talks about the acceleration of the rocket. Okay, so a model rocket engine develops 12 newtons of thrust. I know right away, by the way, that this is a D12 engine because nothing else generates 12 newtons of thrust unless it's some other engine that does. Okay, so that's the thrust. That is the um, exhaust velocity. And uh, what is its fuel burn rate? Right? And then this is like a separate question here. So, because uh, it's not saying that it burns 238 grams per second, it doesn't do that. So, uh, let's figure this out. Let's go force times time is mass, change of velocity. Now, if you want the fuel burn rate, that is the kilograms in one second. So, make your time one second. Right? And then let's see, the mass is what we're trying to solve for. The mass that it burns in one second will be the burn rate. Uh, this is 718 meters per second, right? And then the force is 12 newtons, right? So 12 newtons, and then I guess what is the mass is going to be this divided by that, right? So 12 divided by 718. So you can see, by the way, if this is a bigger exhaust velocity, then that will be a smaller mass burn rate. Okay, so the mass I'm getting in one second is 0 0.016713 kilograms per second, okay? Which I guess if you had three digits, you'd have to write it that way. Now, the second question says, what's the acceleration of it, right? Well, that's another problem, right? So now we got a rocket. Ask Mr. Duggan his good story about drawing rockets. He once drew a fairly dodgy rocket. I'm going to leave, you know, the plume of smoke off the bottom of this one, okay? Uh, the force upward is 12 newtons. Right, and then don't forget that it's it has a mass of 238 grams, which is 0.238 kilograms. Right, and then it has a weight. The weight is 0.238 times 9.8. So let's see, 0.238 times 9.8 is 2.3324. Right, so that's the downward force, is 2.3324. This is a Newton's second law problem, net force problem, right? So we go this up minus that down, right? So 12 minus, this is the hardest type of problem, right? But, you know, you wanted to be rocket scientists. You're the ones that wanted to do that. Okay, so 2.3324. And we talked about rounding at the end when you get the answer. Never, ever round these things in the middle. Okay, so let's see, 0 0.238 uh, times uh, A is what we're trying to find, right? So let's see, I'm going to go 12 minus the answer I just got, uh, divide by 0 0.238, and I get 40.62 meters per second squared, which I guess we only have three digits in this problem, so there's the answer. Yay? Okay. Be sure to ask Duggan about that.